So, I bet you guys thought that I wasn't going to be doing a legit video ever again. Well, I am. Today we're going to be talking about something. I was just playing it on my new Nintendo Switch. Let me reach down here and grab some stuff real quick. Oh. A while back, one of my subscribers sent me two uh, SD memory cards. One for my 3DS and one for my Switch. And he sent me a copy of a lovely little game I've been playing. Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And today I'm going to talk about it. This is not a discussion video. I've just recently made it to chapter 4 and I've been farming blades at the uh, at the salvage point in the port wherever I am. But uh, this is not a discussion video. This is more of a first impression. So I just want to talk about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 a little bit. But I also wanted to, before I get into it, talk about the predecessors. So let's go ahead and do that real quick just for a moment. So a lot of you know... Uh, the original Xenoblade game was actually pretty fucking fantastic on the Wii system. And it's one of, if not my favorite games on the Wii. I've said quite a few times now that if The Legend of Dragon wasn't my favorite game of all time, Xenoblade Chronicles might be. It's what I would consider a reason to own a Wii. It was a fantastic game with great characters, uh, a fantastic world, amazing new gameplay mechanics, and a breathtaking story. And it was just an all-around blast to play. I have it on the 3DS. I haven't gotten too terribly far into it yet. But it's a great game, and I really recommend you check it out if you get a chance. Either get the Wii copy or get the 3DS copy. Both are fantastic. Both are going to be a blast to play. However, when it came down to Xenoblade Chronicles X on the Wii U, I wasn't as enamored with this one. Maybe it all is chalked up to how much I hate my Wii U. But now that I've repurchased it from a friend, also I beat the Devil's Third last night, that was fun. Now that I've repurchased it from a friend, I'm going to give Xenoblade Chronicles X another shot. I'm going to basically restart the whole game from fresh and give it another fair playthrough. Because after playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I just want more Xenoblade. Because Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is plain and simple fantastic this little game I didn't expect this to be as good as I it, it, I was worried because after X and after seeing them not quite capture the magic of Xenoblade again I was worried about this title but I'm gonna be honest 30 to 40 minutes in I realized this is gonna be a hell of an adventure and the thing with Xenoblade Chronicles 2 that I really want to emphasize that makes it as good if not possibly when I beat it better than the original is the fact that it has a lot of the things I liked from the original. Uh, it has excellent characters, it's got a great story, great setup, great mystery, and one thing that X didn't have. I played X a lot. I played X well into chapter 5 or 6. And one thing that X never really had was a hook. Something that got me interested in the story, got me invested, got me caring. I mean, even into well into chapter 5 and 6, I already knew about the twist. I already knew about why it was we needed to find the thing we needed to find and why it was so important because of what was going on with us and, and who we really were. I get that. But I never got a hook in X. With Xenoblade Chronicles and Xenoblade Chronicles 2, I get hooks. So let's just, let's just talk about that real quick. If you've never played Xenoblade Chronicles, don't worry, this isn't a spoiler. This happens in the very beginning of the game, in the first area of the game. But it's a hook that gets you interested in playing the rest of the game. In the, in the first Xenoblade Chronicles, it takes place in a, in a fantasy world. Uh, you know, humans and other races and other creatures live on two massive titans surrounded by an endless sea. And, it, and life has been good. But, you know, there, there exist these other creatures on the other titans separate from them called the uh, the Mechon. They live on Mechonis, you live on Bionis. And, and these things come over and attack us every once in a while. And we don't quite know why. And the hook at the very beginning of Xenoblade Chronicles, after you played to a certain little point in your first little area, the hook that got me was the death of Fiora. And, and again, this is not a huge spoiler. It happens in the first half hour to hour of the game, depending on how fast you play. But the death of Fiora, when the, when the Mechon... Uh, the, the, the horde of Mechons attack Colony 9. Shulk and Ryan are trying to stop them. And Fiora, you know, basically sacrifices herself, gets killed by the faced Mechon. And, and Shulk's just like, no! I was, I was hooked from that moment. I was like, I know I want to play the rest of this. I know this is going to be a good story. This is going to be breathtaking. I can't wait. And Xenoblade Chronicles 2 does something like that even faster than Xenoblade did. 
And I'll be honest, the first 15 minutes to a half an hour of Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is going to be a bit of a slog. There's tutorializing, there's cutscenes, you're getting introduced to characters, there's a lot of stuff going on. But hear me out. If you have a Switch and you pick up Xenoblade Chronicles 2, when you go on your first big salvage mission, shit's going to pick up. I don't want to spoil things, but I'm gonna kind of spoil things. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna blurt it out. When you go on the first big salvage mission, you don't know exactly what's going on at first. You're being led on by Nia, who becomes a party member later, the little cat girl. You're being led by Malos and Jin. And when it when it comes down to it, you're not sure what you're there for. And even I don't know why they needed Rex to begin with. But you basically fight your way through this ship they pulled up from underneath the Cloud Sea. By the way, the world is amazing. I'll talk about it in a minute. They pulled it up from the Cloud Sea, and you fight your way through it till you get to the Inner Sanctum, and there is where you find Pyra, who is another prominent character in the story, and Rex's blade. I'll talk about blades and drivers in a minute as well. Anywho, that moment where Rex touched the sword and was immediately stabbed in the back and murdered by Jin, I was like, this motherfucker! And I knew from that moment on I wanted to play the game. It had hooked me. It's like, you made it personal. You stabbed me in the back. That shit pisses me off in Dark Souls. You stabbed me in the back and you killed me. And basically because I already made the connection with Pyra, she basically meets you in this dreamlike world where there's a tree and an endless field. And she gives you half of her life force to resurrect you and she wants you to take her to Elysium. The world tree. The, the, the place where I think the creator is supposed to dwell. Either way, I was hooked from the moment that happened. I was like, I want to beat the shit out of Jen. That prick stabbed me in the back. I want to get Pyro to Elysium. And I want to know what's going on with the Aegis. And as of right now, I've reached Chapter 4, so I know quite a bit more about Malos and Pyra. And so far, this story is so fucking good. I love the characters. I love the world. The world is amazing in Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Thing, the thing with the original Xenoblade, the first game, is you lived on two massive titans. They were huge. Fucking huge. Bionis itself is the first half of the game, and you spend a little bit of time in the second half on Makanis. They were two massive titans that had been in an endless battle eons ago before striking their death blows and going dormant. And they are surrounded by an endless ocean. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 doesn't take place, I think, in the same world. But it takes place in a world surrounded, but the world is covered in a cloud sea. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense at first. Imagine the ocean. Now imagine instead of clouds being up in the sky, they're on the surface of the ocean. They can be thick, they can be thin, you can swim around in it. I didn't know if I jumped off the Titan with the cloud sea at a certain level if it would kill me or not. No, I can swim around in that shit. It is amazing first and foremost, the idea of a cloud sea. It's so unusual but easy to grasp that it makes it very intriguing i just i really like the concept the cloud sea covers the world and humans and uh Gormadis and other different races of individuals live on the backs of titans. And titans come in a variety of sizes. You have really small titans that you basically can put a little bit of a material on and turn into a boat and they'll swim you out somewhere. You have massive, huge titans like the Gormadi Titan, which is not as big as Bionis. None of these things, I think, are as big as Bionis. But you have the Gormadi Titan, which is huge enough that you have you know, a giant plains and mountains and you have an entire city on its back and it's it's just fascinating seeing how they took the concepts of the endless sea and the titans and they reconfigured that into something new and interesting it's a really interesting world and traveling from different titans is is fun when i got to the the technically the second titan you know the second titan you go to is uh the orion the orion city capital whatever it's called this is like a giant well hell you can see him right here this titan here when you get to this Titan and you get into its belly, you go inside this motherfucker, you get into its belly, I had a moment I hadn't had since I played Xenoblade Chronicles 1. I remember the first time I played Xenoblade Chronicles 1, and between day and night cycles, you have, you know, different things that occur. I remember in Xenoblade Chronicles 1, I was at, I believe it's Satori Marsh, and when the nighttime cycle kicks in, it gets dark, but all of the plant life in that place illuminates. It's this bioilluminescent, you know, neon shit. And I was like, this is amazing. It was on the Wii, so it wasn't like super amazing graphics, but I saw it and I was like, this is amazing. I love this. It's beautiful. When I got to the Cobalt Cliffs, 
Cliffs inside the Orion Titan and I looked at the different multicolored trees, the light shining through its translucent skin and illuminating this giant place with waterfalls and I was just like, this is beautiful. The game is beautiful. I've only been playing it in handheld mode. I haven't seen it on my TV, but the Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is beautiful, and the world is beautiful. The, the different locales that I've been to already are just simply breathtaking. The Gormati Titan is awesome, and it reminds me of the Bionis uh, Guar Plains, and uh, the, the, the Orion Titan is just breathtaking when you get in there and you see just the colors and the hues, and it's just, I fucking love it. I love, I love the world in this game. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has a beautiful fucking world. The thing that it has is characters that I like. By far my favorite characters so far, more than likely, you know, it's not even a main prominent character, but Azurda? I believe his name is Azurda. When you first start the game, the character you play as is Rex. Rex will eventually find Pyra, and that's his, his companion, his blade, his living weapon. Uh, but Azurda is the titan that Rex lives on initially, and it's, it's ba he's basically just a dragon. He's a titan. He's not huge. He's about the size of a dragon out of Dark Souls. You know, he's about the size of a deer. He's just a big dragon. And, and Rex lives on his back. And what happens is, um, later when you... You take that big salvage mission, shit goes down, Rex gets killed, he gets revived, he's fighting against Malos and he can't quite beat him. Azurda comes and saves you. Azurda can fly and he's fucking cool, he's badass. He comes and he saves you but he gets shot down in the process. And some of this might seem like spoilers content, I promise you it's the first, it's the first hour of the game. I promise you it's the first hour of the game. He gets shot down and I was worried because I was like, I don't want Azurda to die. And for a moment I thought Azurda had died. I was like, fuck, I really liked Azurda. Azurda doesn't die. He basically turns into a chibi form. He uses all the rest of his energy to revert back to some sort of small furry creature. And basically in like another thousand years he'll grow back into his titan form. But like I think Azurda, or Gramps as Rex calls him, is like my favorite character so far. Because he's just, he's, he's intelligent, he's adorable, he rides around in Rex's little hat helmet thing. And I just, I really love him. He's great. But uh, the rest of the party so far, my party, consists of Rex, my character, Nia, who is the cat girl that was with Jin and Malos, but she realized they were fucking bad real quick, and Tora. Tora is a no pawn. I fucking hate no pawn. But Tora is a little bit more um, tolerable than past no pawn. When, when, if, you, if you've never played the Xenoblade games, think of the no pawn kind of like Moogles. If you, if you know what Moogles are, if you ever played Final Fantasy. And if you don't, I don't know what to describe them as. If I had to be a real dick, I'd be like, think of them as minions, but they're not quite as annoying as minions. But I remember when I played Xenoblade Chronicles, I hated Ricky. I hated him. Ricky the Hero Pawn. I hated him. I, I did not fucking like him. And then in Xenoblade Chronicles X, the No Pawn came back, and I don't think there was a party member in that one. I don't remember. I didn't get far enough. Maybe there is. But in Xenoblade Chronicles 2... <laughs> Like, one of the next uh, party members you get is Tora, and he's not as intolerable as the rest of his race, so I can thank him for that, but he does call me Rex Rex a lot, and I fucking hate it. But, um, so far the characters are really intriguing, not just the party members, but a lot of the side players too, and the villains. I gotta be honest, Jin and Malos are incredibly intriguing so far. I don't know a lot about them, I know enough about Malos. I don't know a lot, a lot about them, but they're very intriguing. Jin himself, uh, at first I was like, where is your blade? And now I, I'm pretty sure I know where his blade is. But uh, plain and simple, it's just really, really interesting, the different characters. I've met a lot of other players that I want I don't want to talk about because, of course, spoilers. You guys who have played the game know I'm on Chapter 4. Spoilers for some people. But uh, the, the characters are all very interesting, at least the main players so far. And I think there's another party member I've met so far. I met him at the Cobalt Cliffs. He has a great sword and he has his own blade. I think he'll join my party later, but I don't know yet but he was funny he was kind of like comic relief he's he's even more annoying than Tora but uh, so far I really like the characters and I like the interactions going on between them I also like you know some some game mechanic I need to talk about but I like the relationship between drivers and their blades so Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has a new mechanic thing going down which makes your party size so much larger you have uh, human Gormati doesn't matter you have all types of people have the ability 
but not all types of people, they have the potential to become a driver. They're able to, you know, they're able to do things that other people can't. The potential to become a driver is something not everybody has. For instance, I mentioned the party members, Rex and Nia are drivers. Tora can't become a driver, and in fact, at the time he tried to resonate with a core crystal, it almost killed him. And you'll see this when you play the game, if you play the game. Not everybody can resonate with a core crystal and form a blade. Some people will be hurt or even killed by trying to become a driver. But, you know, Rex and Nia are drivers, and I like the relationships between drivers and their blades. The game series is called Xenoblade, so what do they do? They have these things called blades, which are living weapons. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has has living weapons xeno blades fucking genius i love it it's a great concept and it makes for great gameplay mechanics at first i didn't know how i would take it but you have of course you know rex and nia have their blades rex is pyra and nia has dromark dromark is the white lion thing that you may have seen in trailers uh tora he can't resonate with a core crystal so he made his own he has this little mechanized girl called poppy who is his blade and it's cute it's kind of annoying at this point in the game because i can't get him to resonate with any blades but he has poppy and i like the relationships between the characters the drivers and their blades this is so interesting from a story mechanic from a story uh, perspective and gameplay mechanics wise. It's, it's interesting because you get this bond between Rex and Pyra, between Nia and Dromark. You get this bond between these characters which plays out during the story but that bond also permeates the gameplay as well the stronger your bond the stronger you are with your blade the more they will grow in power the more they will grow in abilities the more their affinity chart will increase the more damage they'll do the more they can support you in combat all these different interesting little things that means i'm always excited in combat because i'm like i'm making my blade stronger and i'm making our bond better and i'm always excited in story because i'm like i want to see how they interact with each other and everything and it's just really fucking cool Xenoblade Chronicles 2 has living weapons, Xenoblades. That is a great concept. And it, it opens up in uh, combat as well. I'll talk about gameplay in just a minute, but it's just, it's so neat that they went with this concept, pulling things that I didn't expect. But the, the, the best thing about the Xenoblades, the best thing about the living weapons, the drivers, the blades, you can have more than one blade. So the game has kind of turned into pseudo-Pokemon for me. Or pseudo-Digimon. I don't like Pokemon. Sorry. I'm not a big Pokemon fan. Anywho, the game has turned into pseudo-Digimon for me because you have... You have the ability to have more than one blade. So right now, Rex, I've got like several different blades that are stuck to him. And you can you can release them. Like you get a lot of basic blades that aren't really very interesting. You have rare ones too. But you get a lot of basics and I release them and I get the boosters off of them and things like that. But right now, Rex has... Pyra, which you can't remove their main blade, but you can equip two more when you get to a certain point in the story. You can equip English. You can equip one, and then you can get to a certain point in the story where you can equip two. Rex has uh, Pyra. He has another uh, female. I can't think of her name right now, but she has white hair and she has a spear. And then he has Amani, because I remember her because she's my waifu now. She is this darkness character who has a cannon, and she's she's like a marionette, and she's creepy, and I fucking love her. She's great. And uh, with Nia, I have her with Dromark, and she has Ursula, who's this little anime girl who, who has literally a polar bear. I don't know why the polar bear is with her, but he's the one that does the hitting, and she's a healer, so I put her on Nia. And uh, now Nia also has um, another one, but I can't fucking remember the name of it. Either way, I'm putting all my healers on Nia, because Nia is my healer. And, and, and blades come in three types. You've got healing, you've got attack, and you've got tank. And it's just, it's, oh, it's so fucking cool, both from a story perspective and gameplay perspective. I fucking love it. I always got to check to make sure the camera's recording. All right, last but not least, I'm going to talk about the gameplay real quick. Uh... Like I said, the, the, the gameplay, you know, you have the drivers and the blades and different things like that. But Xenoblade Chronicles 2 does something that I feel is really fresh and really interesting that X didn't do. In X, you had almost a one-for-one -one copy of what you had in the first Xenoblade game, which is you had timers and you had, you know, buffs and you had these different things. But you had the arts and you had the arts palette at the bottom of the screen. And you'd cycle through the different things and you'd have to wait for timers to do and you'd attack and all that. With Xenoblade Chronicles 2, however, they have a different thing 
thing entirely. You have the auto attack system, which means if your character's in combat and he's next to an enemy and you're not fooling around or running around or doing anything with him, he'll auto attack. Rex will stand there and hit the enemy with a three hit combo until the end of fucking time or until he dies. But now, every single time you hit the enemy with an with a auto attack, it will fill up meters on your other attacks, your arts. You will slowly but surely, as you attack, fill up the arts meters. When you use your arts, for instance, your backstab or your, your side stab or whatever the hell the name is called, I can't ever remember, spinning edge. When you use your, your arts, you'll fill up a gauge for your special attack. And what this does, what this one change, not having timers, does, it makes you more engaged in combat. You're not just sitting there going, okay, I can run in circles around the enemy until my, my backstab fills up. No, you're engaged in combat. You know you need Rex to be there attacking or he won't fill up his meters. If he's not doing damage, he's not filling meters to do more damage. So you're attacking, you're filling up your arts, you're using your arts, you're filling up your special, and when your special gets filled up, just one category, you can fill it up multiple times to level two, three, or four. Fill it up to one category, and you can use your special, which is a combo attack between blade and driver. It means that he will be able to throw the sword that he uses to Pyra, and she'll spin it around and cause a flaming attack. She'll stab it in the ground, causing an explosion. Or if you max that shit all the way up, the two of them will basically hold hands and, and cause a fire pillar to come up. And it's just really fucking cool. The gameplay makes you more invested by changing away from the timers. I'm sitting there in combat caring about whether or not people are doing this or doing that. It used to be just, oh, I gotta wait for my timer to fill up. I'm just staring at this little bubble going, please fill up, please fill up, click, okay. No, now it's, okay, I need to make sure Rex is attacking so I can fill up these different things. Then when I get these things in, in the place, I've gotta get to the side of the enemy and do the back, you know, the side backstab thing. I need to use this ability to topple it. When I get it toppled, I'll use my special and do extra damage. It makes the combat much more invested. And it's really interesting. That's not the only thing that's been changed around with the gameplay. I mentioned earlier I'm at chapter 4 and I'm farming the salvage point for core crystals. Core crystals being what you use to get more blades. And farming for them is so much fun. Anywho, <laughs> I've, got, I've got quite a few rares now. I've been posting them on Facebook if you want to go see. Um... Anywho, the, the, the original game had all these different little items surrounding the level that you could go and you could collect. Weird things like a, a hot carrot or whatever. A hot orange. Cool carrot. Anywho, different items. Xenoblade Chronicles X copied that and had more of the items scattered around the level. Xenoblade Chronicles 2 doesn't do that. Instead, you have salvage points, which you will go to and you'll press A and Rex will dig in the dirt or search around the water or whatever. And it'll pop out items. <laughs> when I talk too much, I get low on breath and I have to yawn. I hate it. I hate it when I yawn. I'm sorry. Anywho, salvage points. He'll look around the salvage point and it'll pop out items. So instead of having items strung all over the world now, you have different salvage points you can go to to get these items. And these items can be used for a number of different things. For instance, you can sometimes use them in crafting of other items. You can use them if they're rare. You can use them to exchange for different things. And there's a trading system around them. But the cool thing is when you've got different blades equipped and the blades have different skill sets, you can get more items than you're supposed to or rarer items than you're supposed to from those salvage points. For instance, having uh, Dromark and I think Amani, they both have the botany skill, which means if they both activate on that salvage point, I'll get three times as much stuff from that salvage point as I'm supposed to. And depending on how high their skills are in those areas, I can get rarer materials as well. It's just a really interesting thing that allows me to go out into the world and hunt for stuff, and it's really fucking fun. Overall, I just really enjoy Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I've been playing it a lot lately, and I've been having so much fucking fun with it. It's just a great game. I don't really have a lot else to say. It's just fun. Exactly what I was talking about down here. You've got the different abilities. The special is the one that's not filled in. But if I use an ability, you see how there's now that little bit there? And it'll slowly fill up. I fucking love this game. It's just a lot of fun. It's just great. So, 
I want to say again thank you to the subscriber that sent me Xenoblade Chronicles 2. And I just, I've been enjoying it. But I do have my Wii U. And I'm going to give X another shot. We'll see how I take it. But overall, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is a great surprise. I look forward to playing more of it. And I enjoy it. I enjoy it quite a bit. How many of you out there have a Switch? I know for a fact that, uh... <sighs> Damn yawns. I know for a fact that my buddies Dale and Adam both have Switches, and I think both of them have Xenoblade Chronicles 2. I'm not sure. When it comes down to it, though, how many of you out there have a Switch? How many of you are interested and or playing Xenoblade Chronicles 2? How far are you, and what do you think of it so far? Do you agree with me, or do you disagree? Do you think it sucks? Because, like I said, this has so much potential. So far, I think it's just as good as the first one. And once I beat it and get the breadth of the story, I'm going to determine whether or not I think it's better than the first one. Overall, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is fantastic so far, and I can't wait to play more of it. Thank you again to the subscriber that sent it to me. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for keeping up with the channel. I understand there hasn't been too terribly much content lately, but I'm working on that. With my schedule lately and with work, it's just a pain in the ass to get around to doing videos. But I did one for you today, so don't say I never gave you nothing. Drop me a like if you enjoyed the video, if you got something out of it, if you enjoyed me just uploading a video for once. Drop a thumbs down if you think the Switch is a big piece of shit and I should shove it up my ass. Thanks for watching. Do take care. I'll see you guys in the next fucking video.